Hello, my name is Anton Archipov and this is Springtime in Kotlang. In this video, I'm going to create a simple web application using Spring Boot. And the goal is to get familiar with Kotlin for building Spring applications. In the application, there will be an HTTP endpoint and the application will store the data in the database. Okay, so let's create a new project. I'm going to use the Spring Initializer. Click Next. Uh, choose Gradle as our build tool and Kotlin as our, our programming language. And keep just one package here called Demo. And I will need to add a few dependencies as well, like Spring Web and Database Success Support and H2 Database. Click Next and Finish and the project is going to import automatically. It takes a few seconds. And once the project is imported, we can start by inspecting our build.gradle.kts file. It is the Kotlin flavor of Gradle build file. First, we can see the import for Kotlin compile task. And next in the plugin section, we can see two plugins related to Kotlin. First, the Kotlin plugin itself uh, which says that we are using the JVM version of it because Kotlin is a multi-platform programming language. And second is the plugin for Spring. In Spring, it is very common for the framework to proxy your classes. And for that, the classes need not to be final. And in Kotlin, the classes are final by default. So we need to declare the classes as open. And it might be a little bit tedious to remember about it all the time. Instead, we can use this nice plugin. And when the plugin sees a spring stereotype annotation, like add service or add controller, it will automatically mark the class as open. Okay, let's proceed and see what's inside the application code. There is a single file called demo application.kt file where the main method is. And we are going to start by adding a new HTTP endpoint to it. For that, I'm going to create a class called a message resource. And it's going to be annotated with a rest controller annotation. Let there be a method called index and it returns a list of messages. So the message class will be the one that holds the data. And in Kotlin, we have a feature called data classes. So for that message, we are going to specify the number of fields that we need in our application. It's going to be an ID of type string, and it's going to be a text of type string as well. We can also say that the value is nullable by appending a question mark to the type name of the variable. So now we can use the list of function to create a list of messages to return from the index method. Let's add a few message instances to the list. Message one, hello, and message two, hola. And the method needs to be annotated with get mapping annotation. So all we need to do now is to launch the application using the main method. The application launches. It took a few seconds to start. And now we can actually make a request to the application using HTTP client. Let's launch the request. And we can see that the endpoint responded with a list of messages in a JSON format. Now let's add the persistence to our application. Normally, the application success the database from within the service layer. So let's add a service that is going to be provided to the message resource by the Spring framework. Val service is going to be a field and it's going to be called a message service. We don't have this class yet. And normally you would add an interface first and then an implementation. But let's keep it simple and add a class instead. I'm going to create it in the same file and annotate it with a service annotation.
there will be two functions. The first function will be called find messages. And it's going to return a list of messages. Uh, we don't have to implement it right away. We can use just the to-do function to suppress the compilation error. And uh, the other method will be called post that is going to take a message as a parameter. And we are going to implement it a little bit later. I'm going to use the repository API to access the database. And we are going to inject it via Spring as well. So let's create an interface for that into the same file. And it derives from a CRUD repository interface parameterized with a message and string. There will be one method that we call a find messages and that returns a list of messages, of course. And we need to tell it how to retrieve the objects from the database. Uh, select all from messages. So there will be a table. And we need to map our message data class with a table annotation and tell it that it maps onto the messages table. We also need to tell it that there will be an ID column. And now we can use the repository in our service layer to retrieve the messages from the database. Find messages function will just call to the database to find all the messages. And since it's the single statement in the function, we can actually convert it to an expression body syntax. And in the post method, we can just call save on the message. Now let's make changes to our controller as well. So we can call to the service to find all messages. And we also need a post mapping. So all we need now is to configure the access to the database in the application.properties file. We need to specify the driver name, the URL, the user, the password, the schema definition and the initialization method. So now we need to add schema definition as well. And there will be a single table called messages with two fields, ID and text, and it maps to our message data class in our application. So now we can just relaunch our application again. The application has started and the database is currently empty. So let's add a few messages to our application. We can do that by executing the post requests. So let's create the post requests right here and uh, just need to specify the correct URL and a message content. Hello, execute the post request once. Let's execute another time. And one more time. Done. So we can now verify how many messages do we have in the database by executing the get request. Here they are. We have three messages in the JSON format. So it seems to be working. So what have we learned? We created a new application using Spring Boot and Kotlin. We created an HTTP endpoint. We configured the access to the database. We learned a few nice things about Kotlin, including the data classes and expression syntax for the methods. And we also learned that there is a nice Kotlin Gradle plugin for Spring that makes the classes accessible for proxying. I hope it was useful and thank you for watching.